several months. After about a year, little Billy Paul come on the scene. Oh, she almost died. And how I walked up and down the floor when the little fellow was being born, and just as soon as he was born, I heard him cry and I screamed, I said, Thank you, Lord, it's a boy and his name shall be called Billy Paul. Many of you know my son, Billy Paul. His mother died when he was just a little baby. And I packed him around. And nighttime, we couldn't afford enough coal to keep fire, so it, I'd have put his bottle under my shoulders like this and keep it warm for him at nighttime. When he'd wake up crying for his mother, I'd put the bottle in his mouth. And she asked me when she was dying, always stick with Billy. We've been real chums. And so everywhere I go, I take Billy, and he's stuck with me. Well, I could take this opportunity to greet you. I don't get this opportunity much anymore. As you get a little older, you can't do the things that you used to do. You want to and in your heart, but one thing I want you to know, that I love you, and I pray for you daily. And I know that you pray for me, because that's why I'm here today. Truly, we're blessed people. And I just want to take an opportunity to say, God bless you. And over the many years that I have known you and have worked with you, when Dad was here and now in the work with Brother Joseph, it's just an honor to call you my friend. And you know, there's words you can't say, but I just trust that this little greeting will be a blessing to you. Just to say, I love you and that you can feel it from your heart. You know, Brother Branham said we could, we could talk too much, we could sing too much, we could shout too much, but we could never pray too much. And each day, Brother Branham told me, he said, when you come in the office, Billy, he said, I want you to do my mail. And I said, Daddy, I don't even know how to turn on the typewriter. He says, the Lord will be with you. He said, he told me he wants you to do that for me. And I said, okay. He said, no matter if you've got one letter or you've got a thousand, he said, the first thing you do is kneel down and pray and lay your hands on the mail and ask the Lord to help you that day. And he said, don't you answer any Bible questions. Don't you answer for me. He said, if there's a question to me, you keep them. And when we get together the next day or that day or whenever, he says, then you write down on the envelope and I'll answer the questions. He said, but no matter where I am, he says, you remember every day that you do the mail. He said, I'll be praying for you. And he says, and God will be there with you. And he says, don't process the mail. He said, just open one letter at a time and just think like you only have one letter to answer. And he says, and then when you're through with that, he says, discard it and then get another one. And that's what I've been doing for the last 60 years. And it's been a great honor. And I know I'm getting older now. I'm not an old man, but I know I'm getting up there. And soon I've got to go and be what we've all been waiting for. And I believe that hour is so close at hand. But I just wanted an opportunity to say I love you. And I thank you for your love to me. Your stand for this word. And you know, Brother Billy, I'm just talking to you from my heart. I believe this is a one-man message. It's a perfect message. There's no mistakes. There's many voices. But for me and my house, we only follow one voice. And that's the voice of God to us in this day. It's perfect. It needs no interpretation. It interprets itself. And I was thinking in a couple of days now, I'll be getting my 83rd birthday. And in my heart, and in my body, I don't feel that old. I know I look it, and the wife says I act like it. No, I shouldn't say that. If it wasn't for her, I, I wouldn't even be here today. But it's just the idea of, of being able to express yourself. This message is everything to me. It's perfect. And may God encourage your heart to stay with it. There's things we don't understand, but remember, if God thought it, Brother Branham spoke it. We believe it, and that settles it. I was thinking the other day, and I woke up, and when I was just a little boy, I was about 12 years old, and we was over in a little town called Vandalia, Illinois, and Brother Brandon was having a tent meeting, and we stayed in a little cheap hotel, 
And I say that to go with my testimony here. And I know you've probably heard me give this testimony, but maybe just one more time I want to share it with you because it's one of the greatest experiences of my life. And in this room, it didn't even have a bathroom. The bathroom was down the hall, and we just had a wash basin right where the camera is here. And it was just a little wash basin and a little pitcher, and that's where we'd wash our hands and things. When we had to take a shower, take a bath, we'd go down at the end of the hall. And I used to sell, in the meetings, I had a little apron, and I'd go down and I'd sell the little books. There was three books Brother Branham had. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Divine healing in, healing in the campaigns. And I thought I was something. Get out there and sell those books. And Daddy would always not see the, the Lord move in the meetings. And as a kid, he'd tell us about these things and how the angel would meet him. And I remember one night, in this hotel room we were sitting there and my dad's brother was working with us at that time he was driving a truck and his name was donnie and he was the youngest of the brothers and he and i and dad were sleeping in the same room and i don't remember i know dad says on tape that he that he took a pillow and threw it over and woke me up all i remember i woke up was a pillow across my face and he had this pillow across my face and he says paul I said, yes, sir. It was about two o'clock in the morning. And he says, you know the angel that daddy talks about? I said, yes, sir. And he said, he visited me tonight and was telling me some things and about the meetings and how to conduct the meetings and what was going to happen. And I said, yes, sir. And he still had the pillow across my face. And he says, and I asked him, could I wake you up? And could I wake up my brother Donnie? And he said, the angel said, you can wake up Billy. And he says, and he says, can he see you? And the angel said, yes. He said, <clears throat> excuse me. He says, when dad, <clears throat> when dad takes his pillow from your face, he says, you know where the wash basin is over there? And I said, yes, sir. He said, he'll be standing there and you can see him. And I said, okay. Remember, I was just 12 years old. And he took a pillow from my face, and I thought it would be an angel with wings flying around, but it wasn't like that. There stood a man in that room dressed in pure white, and he had his arms folded like this, hair down to his shoulders. He just stood there. One thing it reminded it was so outstanding to me. He never spoke a word. But he'd look around the room, but his eyes was totally focused on my dad. Every move was watching my dad. And I can see those I can see him yet now, them eyes just going around the room. He'd look at me and he'd look over at my uncle and he'd look back around like that. He'd move his head a little bit, but his eyes never left daddy's eyes. And I grabbed daddy because I I didn't know it was a man standing in the room over by the window. And and he and I'll never forget daddy told me. He said, don't be scared, son. He said, he's sent from the presence of Almighty God. And he says, he won't harm you. He says, he'll be a blessing. Now watch him, he just held real close, and Daddy held me. And he went from that being of a man, just as Brother Bram describes him, into, I'm not gonna say a pillar of fire, it was like a mist, a light, a vapor. He just kind of vanished. And he went out the window, right out the room like that. And when he left, a rainbow come right in the same window and hung in that room for hours at midnight, two o'clock in the morning, dark room. But he stood there and that pillow, or excuse me, that rainbow stayed in the room. I felt a presence. And I asked my dad later, I said, why did that happen? And he says, he said, because I wanted you to see him. He said, God called you to work with me, Billy, and I want you to see him and to know what Daddy was telling you was the truth. Not that I doubt it, but it was just such an experience, such a wonderful experience. And all through my life, I, I traveled, and my job was to get Daddy in and out of the meetings. And, you know, sometimes I'd let him stay too long, and sometimes I'd take him too quick, and, you know, I just, young boy, but I kept doing what he said, and I'd give out the prayer cards, and I'd bring the people up to him, 
And sometimes I let him stay too long, and he'd say, Billy, you let me stay too long tonight. He says, he says, tomorrow night you don't give out prayer cards because Dad's too tired. Well, I'd go home and I'd cry. I'd be so upset because I messed up the next night's meeting. Then sometimes I'd take him too quick. He'd say, you could let me stay a little longer. No, it was just a hard time. But what a wonderful time. I've seen the people just, any disease, I was thinking the other night, you know, you watch the news, they call this disease that, and they, they change the name, but it's all the devil. It's all the devil. But when the angel met him, he said, if you get the people to believe you, nothing will stand before your prayer, not even cancer. And I'm a witness to you today that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And one, not one time from that time in that room when I saw that angel that I could always tell you, not Brother Billy, but that presence, I could tell when he was near. Even before Daddy would say, you know what, I'm waiting for something. I might be down the audience working the prayer line, ushering, whatever I might be doing, but I could tell exactly when that angel come to the platform. Before Dad sometimes even said, he said, he's here, and I knew he was. So it didn't make a difference what disease it was, I knew when they left, it's going to be well. But he said, if you get the people to believe you, and I was telling someone the other day, I said, I've seen them bring them in well, and they sit there and make fun, and they pack them out dead. I've seen them pack them out paralyzed, and I've seen them bring them in on a stretcher, and they would be dead, and I've seen them walk out alive and well. Only believe. So I just wanted to say, God bless you. And I'd like to just leave my little greetings to you in this. If I don't see you in person, I'll meet you on that day. And I had the privilege when he was here to have the interviews for him, to set him up. And I don't know how it's going to be over there. I just know I'm going to be there by his grace. And I said, God bless me above any man. First of all, he let me be his son. He chose me. And then he let me be a son of a prophet and to be a brother of a prophet and to have worked with both of the prophets in my lifetime. Truly, I've been a blessed man. All we have to do is push play and obey. God bless you. And remember, if God thought it, Brother Bram spoke it. I believe it. And that settles it. God bless you.